How's it going guys? Today is an awesome day. We are going to rebuild our still controller. Yes, I know this is the third controller we've built on this channel. We've built this PID controller, or what's left of this PID controller, up on the wall here. That was the first controller I have ever built. It works great. I still have no problems with it, even though I have robbed several parts from this controller. The second controller was an SCR controller. I used that a couple of times. I had nothing but problems with it. I have uh, reached out to the manufacturer of the SCR itself and got it replaced a couple of different times. Finally, I scrapped the entire controller and started from scratch. So here we are, guys. I'm gonna go through this controller and what I plan to do. All right, now basically there's two types of controllers in the world of distilling that people tend to gravitate towards. The easier of these two controllers that I would think to control the still for me is definitely the PID. You set the temperature, you have a reference point, the PID pulses the element to reach that set point of temperature that you set. There's a few problems with that. Number one, you're chasing the temperature uh, that you need to hit constantly. It pulses your element on and off. It doesn't work great with my column that I have now. It's the, either the element's on too long and it pushes all the alcohol vapor to the top, it condenses, coming comes back down, but it doesn't fall all the way down to the kettle. There's no real good way with a PID, at least not this PID. There are some out there that work a little bit better than this one. But there are no ways with this PID that I have to make this still run the way that I want it to run. The only way to do that is with an SCR controller. Now, like I said before, we have built one of these in, in the past. I had nothing but problems with this thing. The manufacturer ended up sending me several more um, of the SCR controllers. All of them just would work a couple times, then they'd fry. So I went out and priced out the best equipment that I could possibly get to make my new controller. And I got to thinking, why not try to have the best of both worlds? Why not have a controller that will control my still with an SCR and my fermentation with a PID all built into one box so I can keep all of my electronics contained. That's what we're going to get into today guys. Let's get right into it. All right guys, here's the plan. This was a donation to me by a family member. Thank you very much, Mike. I really appreciate this. I've been waiting for one of these forever. If you haven't looked in the pricing one of these guys, it's very expensive to buy your own a couple hundred bucks to get a really nice one. This one was used for a machine with pneumatics, air pneumatics. Now I knew nothing about that. Um, it came with all the guts in it. I gutted it completely, tried to clean it up the best I could, but it's still pretty beat up. So what I'm gonna do is clean this thing up sand her down and paint her the whatever colors we want with whatever graphics we want on it. Um, I'm going to try to fill in all these holes, sand them down real nice and paint over top of them. But before we get to that stage, the first thing I want to do is get the layout of where we're going to put all of our components and test fit everything to make sure it works perfectly. The first thing that I'm going to start with is this lock. I took this lock out, it was a very large lock, I couldn't find one exactly the same size, so I bought one kind of like it, um, just a key lock guys that you can turn, turn a key in, a panel lock. Um, I'm going to try to find a way to get that thing to fit in here. I want this hole covered completely. I might have to use a couple of washers or something along those lines to really get a good fit. Alright guys, now that I got this thing locking flawlessly 
Um, I'm going to tape the whole thing off and start laying out all of our components. What I'm going to use to tape it off is just some frog tape, guys. It's a two inch wide frog tape. I'm going to tape the whole front and both of the sides and possibly the bottom also and we'll get started with this. This is what our layout's going to look like, guys. I got the face of this masked off and kind of measured out. Now this PID isn't going to be to control our still at all. It's going to be to control our fermentation. It's going to be run on 110 volt. Our SCR is going to be wired 220. That's what's going to control our main element in our still. We also have an amp current uh, voltmeter. We have a temperature gauge. Okay. This is just a reference point. I have a temperature probe that goes in the head of our still. We have to fill that space one way or another. I don't want to have to take that out every time that we don't use this. So I put a temperature probe, a sensor, it reads a K-type thermocoupler in the very top. Okay, on this side, we have our main on-off switch right here, our SCR, our second element, our PID, our pump, which is just going to be an accelerator plug, and our fifth and final plug here will go right here. I'm going to go ahead and get the sides taped off here, start marking stuff out where we want our fan and all of our plugs to go. Now I got this thing all marked out. We're going to put our two NEMA 30 amp 220 volt plugs right here on this side and then I'll flip this around here. On the other side the big hole at the top is going to be for our fan. We're going to have a 12 volt small 120 mil fan pumping air out of this box to dissipate some of the heat. The three holes in the bottom here are for our 120 outlets. One is going to be for a pump one is going to be for our PID, the other one is going to be for anything we want to plug into it, it's just going to be an accessory port. Now I'm going to double check everything, make sure all of my measurements are right and start cutting this thing out. Start drilling things in, tapping all of our holes, making sure everything's right and we'll get going here.
Uh, it's been a late night in the garage, guys. Don't mind the hair. But uh, kind of working on this thing here. I've got my box all cut out. I've kind of test fitting some stuff now. Uh, pick this thing up and kind of show you guys what it's going to look like. So this will be our on off. These will control all of our components here. We have a, temp can, uh, a temperature indicator, our uh, amperage, our SCR, and then our PID way at the bottom. On the left side of the box, these are our three 110 volt plugs. On the right side, we have two twist lock NEMA 220 plugs. All right, guys, that does it for part one of our controller build series. I really hope you enjoyed watching me kind of plan this thing out, put it together. I don't want you to think that this is something that I just tossed together or come up with. This is several months of planning, uh, several weeks of work that I've put into this thing just to get it up to this point. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. I hope you come back. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button. Also, I just started a Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the channel, no pressure. Go ahead and hit us up at the proof room on patreon.com.